This is a KLFI News 10 special report. Good morning. As we have been reporting, Attorney General Jeff Landry is going to speak about the decision whether his office will charge two officers in the death of Alton Sterling. Now, Sterling was the man who was shot and killed in the summer of 2016. We're going to take a live look at the press conference where we can expect Attorney General Jeff Landry to speak at any moment. Now, we are told he has met with Sterling's family just moments ago to inform them of the decision. Now, KLFI News 10's Dalfred Jones is also in Baton Rouge. Dalfred led our coverage in the summer of 2016. Dalfred, what is the mood there? Megan, I've got to say to you, since the beginning, protests have been peaceful. And even on today, it's uh, overcast, quiet, not a crowd here. But if you can see behind us, you can see these concrete barriers uh, that have been placed along this entrance to the main headquarters of the Baton Rouge Police Station. No, they weren't here before. They haven't been here in the past. So I spoke with one of the officers to see what their reason was. And he said this to control the amount of people and the traffic flow going in and out of the department's headquarters today. So I would assume they were expecting or possibly are still expecting a large crowd as the attorney general is uh, scheduled to make his decision today on whether or not officers, Baton Rouge police officers, Howie Lake II and Blaine Salamone will be charged in the death of Alton Sterling. Can you shed any uh, background information on what exactly happened in 2016? I know that you were there uh, leading our coverage. Yes. Well, Megan, back in uh, July of 2016, when Sterling was shot and killed, uh, protests followed for the days, I mean, at least three days, we were here giving you guys live coverage of the events. Uh, and at the time, the family was demanding justice. People across the country were demanding justice in the death of Alton Sterling. And I believe it was May 3rd of 2017 that the federal government announced that they would not be pursuing charges against these officers. So uh, from conversations I've had with community members here in Baton Rouge and uh, a family member of the Sterling family, uh, Alton's aunt, Vita uh, Abu Saleh, she says that uh, the attorney general's decision is somewhat of a last hope for their family, and they're hoping that he does decide to pick up those charges th that the federal government did not. I understand, yeah, the family had filed a wrongful death lawsuit mm -hmm. against the city of Baton right. Rouge. And I know you covered many of those protests. What were people, you know, what are people's main concerns with this whole ordeal? I think, honestly, their main concern is that these officers uh, be held responsible uh, from their perception. Of course, the federal government has ruled them uh, non-criminal, and we'll see what the attorney general uh, will announce in the moments to come. But the family and the community, I, I, they want someone to be held accountable for Sterling's death, as they feel he's, he's out that, at that store for years leading up to his death, uh, selling those CDs. Uh, and, and they want to see somebody held responsible from what they say Alton was a good guy, uh, a big teddy bear, uh, his aunt uh, Vita would describe him as. So I think they really want to see someone uh, face some type of charges. Uh, but we'll see what the attorney general has to say in that press conference uh, that is happening a few miles away from here, <clears throat> excuse me, over near the courthouse. So I guess we kind of have to sit and wait. But I think the people do want to see uh, these officers uh, charged with some type of criminal conviction. Yeah, uh, definitely a, dr a dramatic case. Um, now, there mm -hmm. is a press conference at noon at police headquarters. That's why you're there? We've heard rumors that a uh, press conference will be here at police headquarters at noon. However, uh, Sergeant McNeely of the, the uh, public information officer with the Baton Rouge Police Department says they're not sure where that uh, that conference will be, but we are expecting them to give some type of response to the attorney general's decision. Uh, so we'll be here live on location, just waiting to hear something from BRPD. If not, we'll get, we're going to head over to council chambers where they say the, the, the announcement may be made along with the Baton Rouge mayor. Okay. And again, um, like you told mm -hmm. us in the beginning, not, ex or not seeing any protests happening now, but police are definitely prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes, police are definitely prepared. I, uh, 
Uh, just to get a feel, you know, get back in the, the mood of the environment here, I, I stopped by the Triple S Food Mart on my way in uh, just to check out, see if there was any activity there, get a feel for the people. Uh, but there was no one there, just the regular everyday customers uh, who, who often go in and out of that store. So we'll, um, I have to say it was peaceful. Uh, haven't seen anyone out, no signs, no chance. Uh, I think people are just kind of sitting back, waiting on the Attorney General to make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. And um, again, we are still waiting on that press conference. Uh, we're waiting for Attorney General Jeff Landry to speak at any moment. Mm -hmm. He was speaking earlier today with the Sterling family to inform them of the decision. Megan, if I yes, if I may, I've just received some uh, information that the police announcement, uh, the response from the. Uh, Baton Rouge Police Department will be held at the courthouse at 1130. So once okay. we're done here, we're going to head over there and get in position so that we can get you guys the most up-to-date information. Be ready for that. And we'll, of course, go live um, at uh, News 10 at noon with more information from that, of course. Um, yeah, definitely a dramatic, dramatic case the last two mm -hmm. years. And um, yes. this might be the last uh, decision made in this case. Yeah, at, at least from a governmental standpoint, because the family has filed a civil suit, so uh, their attorney may be able to win some type of litigation uh, in the courtroom. So we'll just we'll have to see how that plays out. I'm pretty sure once the AG makes his decision, uh, the civil suit uh, will follow. Yeah, how has the family uh, been throughout these past two years? I know they've been, you know, pretty vocal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in this. Yeah. How how have they been? My communication has been mainly with Alton's aunt, uh, Vida Abusale, and she's been pretty, pretty torn up, uh, very outspoken throughout the entire ordeal. Uh, and, and I was just checking her Instagram page before we started. Uh, she was kind of taking some anger out on some local uh, activists in the area who she says, you know, have kind of let the fire die down. Uh, and that's something that uh, she is not looking forward to. So she's really kind of picked up this cross, if I may, uh, and, and she's been carrying it and continuing to uh, lobby for justice for Alton. Uh, again, I'm sure she's waiting anxiously. I'll send her a message in a few minutes to see what they're, um, how they're feeling before the AG speaks, which I'm told, which may be in the next two minutes. Yes, that's what we're saying, two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, important to note, uh, Sterling, again, was shot and killed in the summer of 2016 by two Baton Rouge police officers. Um, he, it says he had a gun. It wasn't, um, he didn't have it in his hand mm -hmm. at the time. Um, definitely two mm -hmm. cell phone videos were quickly released after that. Uh, definitely uh, mm -hmm. leading to protests. A lot of people outraged by what yeah. they saw. There was body camera video. That has not been officially released yet. Um, but I know those cell phone videos were and highly mm -hmm. debated topic for those protests. Yeah, something that we definitely should not overlook is the, uh, the, the shooting that followed, I believe, two weeks after uh, the death of Alton Sterling, where three law enforcement officers here in Baton Rouge were killed. And that gunman uh, actually wrote in his letter that, you know, he was trying to hold police accountable uh, for, for those actions. Uh, but it was something that was very, very sad to see, a very dismal 